Alex has been working for the Northamptonshire Healthcare Foundation Trust since 2007 as a mental health nurse. In 2012, he took on the role of RCN workplace representative and has since worked tirelessly to see the Trust's pride values become embedded in their working culture. For me, um, whether somebody's a chief executive, a director, a porter or a cleaner, we're all cogs in a wheel and we all have a role to play in, in what we do to deliver services to patients. I think what Alex symbolises is the willingness for people to step up. People stepping up to come and say, actually, do you know what, let's think about what we could do differently. When Angela came into role, what she did was recognise the worth that unions can bring to that partnership working. So rather than seeing the unions as an adversary, she saw them as a partner in the role she has to perform. You can't see everything, you know, you're leading an organisation, you are reliant on other people's and different perspectives and I really value that. But I want people who are going to come along and not tell me that it's all okay. I want people who are going to come along and say, actually, this is something we need to work on together. You're right. Nice oh, to see are you. you. Oh, very well, you? Yeah, not too bad. Okay. We need to negotiate on policy, we need to look for the best for our members mm. and, and that means challenging sometimes mm. but it needs always to be a healthy challenge mm. and I think delivering a healthy challenge is something that you, you learn how to do. And in particular we've got some good examples so our learning partnership agreement with the train unions is really important to us. Our living wage is very important because it's about valuing everybody and I think finally one of the big initiatives that we're on at the moment is the healthy workplace. Um, our workforce is important, but we can only recognise that if we value it and recognise how they feel makes a difference to patient care. 60. Same with 60. I think the way that we've been able to work with the RCN and with other staff side organisations in really close partnership all the way through from original conversations about shaping up what would it feel like if we were to do this yeah. and in terms of looking at the specific consultations and pre-consultation and I think that's been extraordinary in the way that it's helped us shape the service delivery and brought people with us. I've got about half an hour, we can go and sort of sit down and sort of yeah. map that out. Yeah, that'd be great, I've got yeah. some time. Yeah, Fancy let's do go. that. We, yeah. um, we have a real trust and open discussions. If there's an issue out there, I know it'll be flagged to me and vice versa. And that's a really healthy part of our culture that I, I truly value. Across the organisation at any one time there would have been up to 35 to 40 cases, um, other sort of disciplinary process, grievance procedure, formal sickness or uh, performance management. Since 2012 we've worked tirelessly to adopt a sort of non-blame, non-reactive non way. Um, in 2015 I think the formal cases had reduced down under 10 and what really really sort of embeds the change for me is that that number of formal cases has remained under 10 all year. It's important to us that we do measure and monitor our formal cases um, and I'm really pleased to see that the levels are um, decreasing. So she recognises that by giving him the staff side time she does that it's benefiting her organisation. It's about partnership working, working together. It's about making sure that there's equality in that partnership. We all play different roles, but they're all important. For me, I've learned a huge amount from working with staff side colleagues and from watching staff side colleagues operate. And I think that voice, whether it's at the exec board or whether it's at trust board or whether it's just on a daily basis, is crucial to how we develop. Yeah. Um, and as important to me as you know, working alongside service users and carers and all of the other key voices that we need to deliver services. If you want to embed values in an organisation, you have to live your values. You can't just superimpose them by somebody telling you these are your values. Um, and then you have to feel it, you know, you have to feel it on the, on the ground, you have to feel listened to. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Oh, very well, then you. Yeah. You have to feel not blamed, you have to feel supported. Um, that's not to say that you, you can't have challenging conversations or go through a formal process, but it's about how you make people feel, not what you do to people. Because if you treat people with dignity, respect, and you make people feel valued, the chances are very, very high that staff who are treated in that way are also going to experience treating their colleagues, their patients in the same way.